So here I am finally driving my new 2016 Porsche Cayman GT4. This is the video you've all been asking for. I've given up my 997 GT3, which you saw me drive all of last year. Now don't take this as a full review. This is gonna be just my initial impressions. I've yet to fully break this car in. Until then, taking it easy, doing a little cruise and giving you some initial impressions. If you wanna check out my delivery process, you should definitely check out my Instagram or Twitter page at Driveopolis you'll see my delivery experience now what can I tell you right away about this Cayman GT4 well it's totally alive it is alive already the steering is brimming with feedback it's got lots of feel it reminds me wholly of the 991 GT3 that I love so much from last year probably one of my favorite cars from last year was the 991 GT3 which I reviewed and I also reviewed, if you recall, the Cayman GTS with the manual transmission. The manual is missing from the current GT3, and what a joy it is to have it right back in this car, in a proper GT car. The gearbox is hugely improved over the Cayman. The Cayman has a great gearbox, but this GT4 is even more improved. There's more mechanical feeling, the throws are shorter, and of course it retains a wonderful short distance from the steering wheel. It's such a short reach away to make the shifts. So that makes it a real pleasure to roll through the gears and I really do not miss PDK at all. With the Synco Rev Match, which is optional, you get almost all the benefits of the PDK but all the joys of the three pedal. So of course, I am just overjoyed. Step out of the 997 GT3 into another manual GT car. Of course, you guys all wanna know, have I felt like I've downgraded coming from the GT3? Well, you know, yes and no. I mean, in terms of the status and the badge, I've gone from a 911 to a Cayman, which everybody thinks, oh, it's a bit of a downgrade. But in terms of technology and driving experience, absolutely not. This car, I gotta say, it kills a 997 GT3 for driving experience. It's sharper, it's more precise, it's got much better technology. The chassis feels stiffer, it's more of a piece, and with a mid-engine layout, it's such a well-balanced, such a joyous chassis to throw around. Of course, I haven't really hammered around in it. I'll save that for some track videos that I'll do for you guys later on this season. But even going into one or two corners, you feel it already. The balance is there. The balance is so sweet. It's so easy to manipulate. And of course, it does. It loses a bit of that 911 pitter-patter front end and the heavy rear feel with that Herculean rear traction. You don't get that. It's not a 911 experience, but it is still very much a Porsche driving experience. It is a Porsche GT car. It's firm. It's a very firm ride. You do feel that you're in a motorsports car. And with these beautiful carbon buckets, which oh, I'm so grateful to even get, you don't get the carbon buckets in every GT4 because, first of all, not everybody specs it out. Even the ones who did spec it out, you don't necessarily get it because there was a stop order on it. Here we go. We're going through a corner here pitch it in there is absolutely no body roll the front end bites so hard when you accelerate out you are treated to this awesome naturally aspirated motor 3.8 liter a proper 911 power plant in a Cayman would you believe it finally 911 power in a Cayman and it sounds and feels the absolute business of course, being naturally aspirated makes it special already. And nowadays, where everything's gone turbocharged, a new boxer came in, a new 911 to turbocharge. So having a NA engine makes this already a classic, already makes this an enthusiast special. What else can I say? The interior, of course, is beautiful. I've, got, I've gone for the full leather package. It's only about a $1,200 option, which I believe was actually standard on a Cayman GTS, but of course on a GT4, you have to pay for it, which I think is a bit odd given the GT4 is a bit higher, but of course, no matter. For $1,200, it was a no-brainer. It's a much nicer interior. Of course, I got the carbon bucket seats. I didn't opt for the colored stitching. It was a little too much for my blood. I did get the red belts just covering my Shockworks t-shirts. I love my friends at Shockworks. Shout out to them. Speaking of shout outs, I had this car painted carmine red it's not metallic it almost looks metallic but it's not it's a very deep blood red other people might prefer the guards especially if you see it in pictures the guards is actually quite a bit brighter but it is orange tinted I really do not like orange reds this is a pure deep blood red and it changes so much depending on the lighting conditions when it's darker it's almost pitch black when it's bright it's almost as bright as guards red 
So you're almost getting the best of both worlds. You get a lot of dynamic range and the color just looks beautiful to my eyes. Of course, it is quite fragile. So I had the entire car wrapped from head to toe in Expel wrap. I had it wrapped by Protex Vancouver. Shout out to them. They did an amazing job with the wrap. Here we go, just exiting another corner here. And it's so beautifully balanced. It's so tight. You're sitting on the suspension and feeling all the nuances of the chassis just like I did in a 997 GT3 and just like you would in a 991 GT3. Okay, quick comparison between this and a 991 GT3. I have to admit it is still not quite as manic as motorsports, as wildly crazy as a 991's drivetrain engine. That engine spins up all the way to near 9,000 RPM. It is such a shrieking mechanical buzzsaw of an experience. It sounds so mighty. This engine is just epic. First time you rev it to 9,000 RPM, you will completely forget about the Metzger and whether you really need the old engine anymore. You, you get a really sweet 3.8 liter engine in this car, but is it quite as manic and aggressive in motorsports as a 991? I would say probably not. However, this car does have the manual. You don't get the manual 991 GT3, and for me, that's more important. We have the 911R announced now. We've all seen the pictures and the videos Porsche has released. That transmission is almost certainly going to make it to the Gen 2 991 GT3. That car is probably the one to have. 991 GT3 engine experience with a manual gearbox, just like you find in this GT4. Of course, it's more expensive than a GT4, and you don't get that sweet honey of a mid engine balance. But in spite of that, I think that's one that most people will have. Like loading through these corners here, a little bit of overseer attitude on the exit. I'm careful not to use up too many revs because of my break-in, but you can feel, I can already feel the excitement in this chassis, the tension that I can wind and unwind and have a lot of fun playing with. I love it, I love it, I love it. This car is an absolute honey. I think if you were to ask me how I would characterize a GT3, the 991 GT3 versus this car, the GT3 is a motorsports experience. It's a race car. It's angry. It's aggressive. This car can be angry and aggressive, but it's much more sweetly natured. It's much more playful. It's actually very similar to me in philosophy as the M2 that I reviewed about a month ago, which you all saw. Thank you for all the support on that video. That one has surpassed 100,000 views with Bimmer Post. So thanks for all your views and all your really nice comments. So back to the topic at hand, the M2 actually reminds me a little bit of the GT4 in terms of a BMW version of a driver's car. This is Porsche's version. This is stiffer, it's more aggressive for sure. You get even more feedback through the steering wheel. You got these wonderful carbon bucket seats and this awesome, awesome, aggressive battle mode driving experience. The great thing about these buckets, you can't even adjust the rear rake and, and they've set it to the ideal position. You've got this perfect near upright experience. It puts you quite close to the steering wheel gives you lots and lots of control and that's the way people really ought to drive and they don't necessarily know that so jump in the buckets try it feel how it's supposed to, to sit how you're supposed to sit and you go back to your regular seats and I promise you'll sit a little bit differently I'm up here on this mountain road here I can still see snow on the roads it's a little bit early for sport driving I have to admit but I really wanted to get you my first impressions of this GT4 and I love it I really really do it is an absolute honey of a sports car. Stay with me on Driveopolis. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you like, at Driveopolis. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. I'm gonna be bringing you more of this GT4 ownership and driving experience. And later this year, I really plan to do a GT4 and GT3 and GT3 RS Ultimate GT car comparison video. I think that's gonna be the big one. So stay with me, subscribe, follow, and I have lots more to bring to you. This is just a quick sneak peek of the Porsche Cayman GT4.